Hello and welcome to this short review on the Apple M1 Pro and M1 Max computers. If you want a really short review, they're pretty incredible, but you know, they are very, very amazing. So let's, let's start by talking about this. So first of all, like many people on the internet, I've had MacBooks for a very, very long time, um, since I started working in the professional services field, doing website design, um, and also video editing and video production, radio production, et cetera, et cetera. So I've used these sort of computers for years now, um, from you know many different forms, many different types, MacBook Pro, MacBook Airs, uh, Mac Minis, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been an Apple avid person that's really kind of used Apple to enhance my career with what I do, etc, etc. And these computers, I've got a 16 inch M1 Max 24 core here, and I've also got a 14 inch um, MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro base model in. So that's the eight core CPU and the 14 core GPU as well. So I've got two different types of um, MacBook Pros here. One which is really light and portable, one that's a beast, um, very big, very bulky, and that kind of feels nice compared to what we've had before with Apple uh, with the last generation, if that makes sense. So my last daily Mac machine was a 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2019, and that cost me 3,700 pounds. It was the maxed out version with the eight core Intel i9, as well as the AMD Radeon 5060 um, in there, and it had 32 gigabytes of RAM. So not actually maxed out, maxed out, but still a very expensive computer. And that lasted me for a very long time. I've, I've used it up until I recently sold it when I got this new one, um, if that makes sense. But the thing is, is that when you compare that, which was £3,699, to this M1 Max, which was £3,299, so I've actually spent less than the last model, the performance changes have been absolutely incredible, um, absolutely amazing. It's, it's kind of shocked me in a way um, with what I was expecting. Now, I didn't believe the hype a year ago with the M1 in the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. I thought it was a fantastic move from Apple to move over to their own silicon and to basically reverse engineer how we engineered the iPhone, which I think is really clever because if you think about it, with the iPhone, we were like, how do we put a computer in a phone? And now we're kind of asking, well, how do we put the chips from these phones back into the computer? It's an amazing evolution of how Apple has gone, if that makes sense, from a technical perspective. So, you know, there's some graphs on the screen here from Geekbench that just show you the drastic changes in performance compared to the two. And you, you can just see it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, it's much better than I expected. So the question you're probably asking by watching this video, if you clicked on the thumbnail, et cetera, et cetera, is, well, why did you go for the 24 core? Because in the UK, it's only an extra 100 pounds with the specific model I've got here. So I've got a two terabyte hard drive. So it's only it was only an extra 100 pounds or whatever um, to get the 32 core GPU. And that's a simple answer. So my workflow and my work sort of um, you know, the way I work and the things that I actually do is I do some video editing, some photo editing, but majority of the things I do is code. So I'm a developer, so I make websites, I also make apps, I do the occasional bit of photography. You can click a video to my camera review recently that I did here, the D5600 from Nikon. And you know, I do all that kind of stuff basically. And I, I had a look online, I did a lot of research into the 24 core versus 32 core. And I decided that actually for the you know for battery life, I'd like to go for the 24 core model because I don't think I need the 32 core model at this moment in time. And because I already had, before I ordered the M1 Max, the M1 Pro with the 14 core GPU, I was able to edit in this so 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 brilliantly, basically so effectively that I was like, you know what, I'm not scared of the 24 core because I've used the 14 core and it's been absolutely fantastic for what I want it to do. And actually, if you're not a professional video editor that's editing 8K ProRes footage, I would actually say the M1 Pro might be the best bet for you in the 14 inch uh, model because the difference between these two, the big difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch is that size and that bulk, if that makes sense. It's absolutely crazy, the difference in size. In fact, even when I still had my 15 inch, I was like, this is a beast of a computer. I'm very, you know, very cautious to take this around and all that kind of stuff as well. So, you know, that's kind of the reason as, as to why I got the 24 core. Now, you may have some um, questions for me because there's, there's nothing on the internet really about the 16 inch 24 core model. And from my understanding of using this machine, doing a few tests, et cetera, et cetera, the 16 inch version of this model compared to the 14 inch 24 core, this still has a bit of a better boost in performance compared to the 14 inch. In fact, if you look at 
uh, other videos on YouTube, I'll link it to you in the comments, you can see that um, you know there are performance gains between the 16 inch and the 14 inch. It seems like Apple has handwritten into the software that you know it can only run at a certain speed on the 14 inch as compared to the 16 inch. Something to do with the thermals probably um, from that perspective. So it's all good. Um, in short, if, if you're still watching at this point, I would say, look, it's all fantastic. It is a fantastic machine. But there are a few things to think about though. So the first problem with these MacBooks is quite an important one for a lot of people, and that's price. They are bloody expensive. Now, personally, I would say they're worth it if you work in videography or you know you need that power. I definitely would say these are worth it. But if you're someone that's looking to start out with your photography projects or you know just need a little bit of, of extra stuff for video or things along those sort of lines, I would highly recommend that you go for the M1 MacBooks. So, you know, the MacBook 13 inch with the touch bar, that will probably be replaced at some point, or the M1 MacBook Air, which is a completely fantastic unit um, as a whole, actually. I've got one at work and they are fantastic. It, you know, fans don't even come on, et cetera, et cetera, and they, they, do, they get the performance that you actually want from that machine. So, you know, check out other YouTube videos about the M1 processors from last year. You'll, you won't be disappointed if you go for an M1. The M1 Pro, this one here, the 14 inch, as you can see, much lighter. Um, I love the embossed bit at the bottom. I think it's a nice classy touch and, uh, and things like that. It's always really nice when Apple do things like that. The M1 Pro, this is the base model, no problems at all. Even with 4K video editing, no problems. With everyday tasks, no problems. I think it's a brilliant machine. In fact, this lasts really, really long from a battery life perspective as well. I have no problems, but I am a sort of golden Apple user, so I don't use Chrome. I use Safari, I use all the Apple apps etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know I'm not using Rosetta very often and I'm also not using that extra RAM from you know Chrome um, and all those other apps so you know the 14 inch for me works fantastic and I think it worked fantastic for you too but if you're using high intensive apps like Chrome or you know video editing all the time the battery will die this one on the other hand the battery life is not as good as the 14 inch it's also not as portable it's very heavy for a MacBook um, usually you'd expect them to be thin and light. Obviously Johnny Ive uh, would have, have made a, a thin and light version of this. I love the design, I love the thickness, but it is heavier. You can definitely feel the weight of it. It feels like something you could slap someone around the face with and it would cause quite a lot of damage if that makes sense. <laughs> it's quite a robust machine. And the other thing that they've added, as you can see, is they've got new ports. When I say new, I mean old ports that they've brought back. The MagSafe, which is now MagSafe 3, two USB-C, a high impedance headphone jack. And on the other side, we've got HDMI. That's incredible to be back on a computer. I do a lot of work in an office and I've always had to have a dongle, etc., etc. If I forget my dongle, I can't present on the screen. So that's brilliant. Another USB um, type C and an SDHC card slot. So you can shove your SD card in here as well if you want to. And the port selection is great. It's fantastic. It's a really good addition to this MacBook Pro. And I think it, it echoes something that Apple have wanted to echo out to the community, which is, we're listening to you again. We want you to buy our products and we want you to kind of, you know, get back to, to us, if that makes sense. Now, a lot of people ask the question, why does Apple want to listen to us again right now? Well, it's quite simple. Apple is a public company. Public companies need to make profit to increase their share price. And as time goes on, Apple are running out of things to do, right? They've got the iPhone. They've kind of innovated that slightly over, over time. And they really need people to buy MacBooks. They really need people to buy stuff. So when Windows started to um, up the ante and say, look, you don't need a Mac, you can come and use Windows to do these things. We give you the ports, we give you the SD cards, like we give you everything you need. You know, a few people actually went to Windows um, from that shift, if that makes sense. And Apple wants them back so that they can get those profits to go up and so that their share price can come back. So I don't think it's some sort of change in philosophy where Apple go, well, you know, we're not right anymore and you're right. I think it's more business led around, we need your money to increase our share price. That's very cynical, but this is business. They are the biggest company in the world for a reason. And that's why they, they kind of get there, if that makes sense. Cool, well, look, I think that wraps up my really short, you know, review of these two computers. I've got some footage that I'll put within this video as well of Minecraft, just in case anybody is interested, running natively on the M M1 Max, and that's an incredible thing to see and, and harness. I think ever since Minecraft came out in 2009, I've tried to find a portable laptop that can 
play it and because I've, I've been a Mac user my entire life that's been very difficult to play that game on a Mac but this is just blown it out of the water um, which is really really stunning so I'll include some footage at the end of this video for that and because I've got the 24 core model I am more than happy to answer your questions to um, do any benchmarks that you'd like me to do uh, and, and all that kind of stuff as well and I'm happy to do the same for the M1 Pro model as well where we've got the 8 core CPU and the 14 core GPU so if you want that base level Apple uh, M1 Pro then I'm happy to look at different results for you um, on that one as well so just drop them in the comments I'll be more than happy to um, have a chat with you and also to um, run some tests on these machines so thank you very much for watching have a lovely festive period um, throughout Christmas and that great new year hopefully everything kind of goes back to normal in 2022 but we all said that last year and look at where we are so thanks very much